Hey, Crafters Big D here. Good to see you. Good to see me. Had some technical difficulties. Camera broke. That sucked. Got a new camera. It sucked. Got another new camera. It's great. So, new camera, new hair, beard's back, it's new. New job. Things have been crazy. New. New campaign. So, we're going to show how to dress up your table for a modern campaign. New campaign I'm running is set in a rural Wisconsin small sleepy town. And I'm building a main street for it. So, we're going to show you how to build several of these main street type buildings. Um, I've seen MDF kits for a couple of them. Um, Mel from the Terrain Tutor actually reviewed them. They're beautiful kits. A little pricey, but I like them. So I'm like, how do I make those? Foam board, foam board, foam board, foam board. You can build anything on a foam board. So that's what we're going to do. So you're going to want to get some foam board. You're going to want some of the dollar store stuff, the cheap stuff we can peel. And we're going to want some quality stuff, the thicker, heavier duty stuff that doesn't peel off because that's going to be our main walls. So we're going to need that. We're going to need a knife, a ruler, some drawing materials, graph paper, and we're going to make ourselves a small town. So this week, we're making a chapel. Let's head to the table. All right, crafters, we are back, and here is our pattern making stuff. Basic drawing materials, our ruler, and our graph paper. You might remember we used the graph paper when we were making our ruins. Uh, we're going to do the same stuff here. I find that making a pattern on graph paper means my lines are straighter, my pieces are more accurate, things line up better, everything looks more in tune with it. You could sit there and measure everything out, and that's nothing wrong with that. I just don't find I have the patience for it. I figure if I can make a pattern and use my pins and mark everything on the foam and then cut it out, boom, I've done it all in one step, and it saves me time in the long run. Plus, I can use these patterns again if I ever want to make that building again. So, let's look at our pattern for our church. Seven and a quarter inches long, four inches tall. We have an inch marked off for some cladding we're going to do at the bottom. I'll show you that when we get to that point. We've got an inch in the front and back in between each of our four windows. We've got a three quarters of an inch. You'll notice our windows don't look the same. That's okay. We're just marking where they are because we have yet another template. Hearstarts.com. He makes molds for plaster bricks that you use to make terrain. Great stuff. I love it. Um, I don't use as much as I used to. I'm more into the media mix stuff. I, I use his pieces to do accents and whatnot, but I still I love it to death. Um, I've got dungeon sets I made over the years from his bricks. Um, I've got a few Egyptian pieces. Beautiful stuff. He does great detail work. If you want to try it out, check it out. It's good stuff. But he also has a projects page. And one of the things he has there are these lovely window traceries and window templates. So... We're going to use these, we're going to cut one out, and we're going to use this to mark off the exacting points of our windows so we know that all of our windows are exactly the same. So we have these nice church-looking windows. They're going to be three-quarters of an inch wide, an inch and a half tall, and they taper at around the one-inch mark. We're going to make two walls from this pattern. We only need to make one pattern. Then we're going to do our front and back walls for our church. And these front and back walls, they're identical in the layout. They're going to be six inches wide four inches tall again space for the cladding and then at the four inch tall mark they're going to go with a 45 degree angle to come to a peaked roof nice easy angles nice 45 make life easy now one inch down we have this circled window this is on the front end uh, we've got a tracery for that but you can also just use a basic compass it's just you mark one inch down you got a one inch radius Boom, there you go you got your circle uh, we did two of those little tracery windows. We're going to two sides are our double doors here. Double doors to size how you want them. I wanted them kind of tall and big. So three quarters of an inch wide, almost two inches tall. Um, they're going to be double doors. 
I haven't decided how I'm gonna make them yet. I've got a couple different ideas. I wanna try and see what's easiest to do so that we can pass it on to you guys. We've also got this, and this is the back window. We want this big, big cathedral window that's gonna be beautiful when we're done. And this is what we're working from. This is the tracery we're gonna work from here. So again, go to Hearst Arts and get this, print this out. Um, I want it for yourself. It's a great stuff. It's a great template to work from. Even if you're only using it for this project, you might get some other ideas going to her starts. So it's a good idea. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pin this up. We're going to cut this out. Um, and then we're going to come back with some foam. All right, crafters. So what we did, this is our back wall. We took our pins, we put them in the pattern. So we marked where our cut lines are going to need to go. And then we put for the window, we put pins into the bottom two corners and then up about an inch on the straight line and then at the peak of the window. And then we took our pattern and we cut out our window and we laid it down. I took some easy clean painter's tape and just taped down the edges there and just took the marker and ran it around. And now when I take my pins out, I have nice clean cut lines so I know exactly where I need to cut to get rid of the window space. Now, you're gonna do the same thing, but on a smaller scale, the sidewalls with these windows. Cut out one of these, you mark it on your you mark it on your template, and then you put it down, run the marker around, and boom, boom, boom. Do it one at a time, and all your windows will be perfectly the same because you use the same template over and over and over. And that way, all your windows will be the same and they'll all look great. You know exactly how to cut them out in the exact right curve. Now, I'm not going to cut out the door. I'm thinking I'm going to do the door as just an external feature. If you want to have the door on the inside or have it so that you can go in and out of your church, then you're going to want to cut your door out. Otherwise, cut your windows, cut your walls, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about assembly. All right, crafters, we are back. And as you can see, we have cut out our uh, church walls front and back. Uh, we did the window tracery where we took our template. We put it down. We did the edging around it, made sure all of our windows were the same. Now, when we got these four walls done, while we were doing that, we also cut out some extra foam for the beginnings of our steeple. So we cut out four pieces of foam, just a regular shape. They're just going to be rectangles. They're going to be one and a half inches wide, and they're going to be two inches long. Then on two of them, we cut a 45 degree angle out of the bottom. And then for the other two, we cut them a little narrower so that after they were a regular size, we cut it off so they were exactly two width shorter, so they will form a perfect square. We then beveled a bottom edge 45 degrees. So these are going to make a nice little cap on the roof when we put them all together. Um, now I'm going to put them together the way we normally do, and that's using my pin method, where we take the piece, we take the other piece, we put our glue, and then we put pins that go through and they go into the foam, and they're going to stay in there. We're going to leave them in there. Um, sometimes I'll leave them a little bit out so they can pull them out afterwards, but in this case, we're just going to push them all the way through and leave them in, and they're going to stay in there as an extra piece of stability. So, I'm going to put together the basic part of the church, and then we're going to put the pins in, glue the whole thing up, and we're going to come right back. Alright, crafters, we are back, and we have a church. Pinned and glued, solid to go, nice bay. It's going to be... Pretty much a done structure at this point. We'll do detailing in a little bit. We also got our steeple put together. Same way, pinned and glued. It's all good. Take this, set our structure aside. Now we're going to do the roof. So you're going to cut some cardboard. You can use cardstock, cereal box. I'm using cereal box, cardstock, uh, heavy duty cardstock, or chipboard work just fine. You're going to cut two pieces. Seven and three fourths by four and a half, and you're gonna cut four one and a half inch by three inch. This is your main roof, this is your steeple. These pieces, after you've cut them, you're gonna cut four of these, you're gonna cut them down into peaks. 
So you're going to have, they're going to be one and a half inches at the one end, but they're going to come to a peak at the other end. So you're going to end up with four of these. The other thing you're going to need, you need a, just a piece of scrap, pink foam, um, nice square sides, because you want a square. You want an, a square 90 degree edge here. And I use painter's tape. Uh, I use painter's tape because it is a paper-based tape, so when we use some glue and Mod Podge afterwards, it becomes permanent. But while you're still working with it, it's kind of tacky, and you can move it and adjust it as needed. So, good stuff. So, I take the painter's tape. I run a piece of painter's tape the length of one of the roof pieces. And then, I take the other roof piece, and I match it up so that they are exactly together. Hold them down nice and tight, and then when you fold it back, you got a nice tight roof top. I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue, run it right down the seam, going to take our square of pink foam, kind of get a little bit of glue on it, both sides, and Boom. When this dries, when this solidifies, we've got a nice, solid, 90 degree angle that'll be great for our roof base. So we need this to solidify up. And then, if you want, I will sometimes run a little extra bead here, and a little extra bead here, just to shore it up. Just to shore it up, make sure that everything's nice and solid, and this is never coming apart. You've got your nice solid roof put together. So, there we go. We can set this aside. Now we're going to take our angles. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the four pieces. We're going to put some tape in between each of them on one side, some tape in between them on the other side, and then we're going to fold them around. And then we're going to run another piece of tape down the edge here to make our cone and then finish it off with a little bit of tape on the top okay so yeah we took that painters tape and we really I mean practically mummified this thing and just enough tape we're gonna cover it all in Mod Podge so that it's nice and sturdy before we start putting on the shingles and we're gonna make it so this thing is nice and solid so this when it's done we're gonna glue it right on to here and you see it just comes over the edge just like that so it'll with the shingle pieces it'll fit on nice and tightly and it'll really look sharp because we're going to have the, the shingles come down just over the edge there so this will go under there and we've got our roof now this is all solidified up when we put it on our church that'll be great just big enough that it covers again the shingles will come over a little bit on each edge once we've got them all down so um next spot we're gonna get some pieces out we're gonna do shingles now there's a lot of different ways you can do shingles um you can sh cut strips of cardstock and then notch them um you can cut individual shingles i know uh, Black Magic Craft, he actually cuts his out of foam and then just uses his hot foam slicer and cuts his real thin stripes. Um, I've got my own method. I like the cardstock, but I realize that cutting strips of cardstock and then notching is really work intensive. I found a slightly easier way to do it. So let me go get my method and we will take a peek. All right, crafters, so here we are. We're back with our handy dandy shingle maker. Okay, it's not really a shingle maker. It is a scrapbooking paper edger, but it really works at that illusion of creating shingles and dozen rows and pretty easy. So we're gonna show you what you do. I'm gonna take a piece of cardstock, one inch wide strip of cardstock. This is not just paper, it's a little thicker, it's 65 pound cardstock. Um, you put it into the guide, put it against the back, and you just press this down. And as you slide it forward, You'll see that it matches this design here. You just match it up and you press it again. 
and just keep going down the line. And when you're done, you end up with a piece of cardstock um, that's got this nice edge to it. And you could take that, and you take it on your roof piece, and you would just glue it, <coughs> just glue it so it just comes a little over the edge of your roof piece. Then you take another one and you lay it down and you have them in about the midpoints of the row below them. So they're just like shingles. And as you go up and up the roof, it doesn't matter because you're going to paint over them what color they are. You just keep doing this up and up and up the roof. And when you get to the top, you'll have a row of shingles. You'll want to trim the last one a little shorter. You can do that when you get there. And then I'm going to put some squares over the top to show that roof peak with the shingle cover there. Um, and you'll just do those individually. So that's the only real tedious work. But you're just going to make a bunch of strips of these. These are about 15 bucks at Michael's. They are totally worth it. They come in a couple different shapes. Um, I like the rounded ones. There's also one that's kind of a diamond shape. I thought that was a little too angular. But I'm sure there's even more if you go online. Um, I just use this one because this is the one I like with the shape I like. So I cut out some shingles. I put them on there. And then we're going to glue them in place. So if you don't have one of these, the other method you can do is going to do the same thing. You're going to take your one inch strip of cardstock and you're going to cut it out of one inch wide and then you're just going to take your exacto or your knife and about every half inch or so you're just going to cut a small tiny wedge out of it and then you're going to do it again another strip and then you're going to put the wedge there and you're going to do the same thing you're going to line them up so the wedges are in the middle of the row above and you have more of a square shingled look i've done that uh, i've done that for tons of buildings in the past um i actually used a bunch of old my old business cards uh from one of my former jobs when i got new business cards it's just the old business cards cut them in strips and made shingles out of them they work great so cardstock notches or one of these edge cutters and you make quick work of it you don't have to cut individuals you're just creating an illusion so whichever method you're going to do put together your shingles and again you're going to put them on your roof row by row start at the bottom and work your way up and when you get to the top you're going to cut little squares and just kind of go down the middle creating that ridge but you're going to want to do both sides of the shingles first for the steeple you're going to want to do the same thing you're going to start at the bottom and work your way up, but when you get to the part where it's about one shingle wide, just leave the cardstock there. And then don't worry about covering the edges. Um, you can just take a small strip of cardstock, kind of fold it over, and just run them down the edges as a sharp edge. Um, that's what they, if you look at a real steeple, that's what they'll do. They'll have like a sharp edge down the side just to make everything run off them nice and cleanly. So go ahead and do that. And we're going to come back and we're going to assemble. We're going to put this onto this with the shingles. We're going to attach this to the roof. And then we're going to spray paint the whole thing to start off our painting process. So since I'm making a white chapel, I'm going to do the whole thing in white. So we come back, we're going to have a mostly assembled and white chapel to work with. All right, crafters, here we are. We've got our roof assembled, the shingles on, we've got the, the ridge point on, and we've got the roof glued to the top of the building. We've also got the steeple, got the shingles there, and the steeple itself glued on. Now, you may have noticed that I've also added a little bit of uh, coffee stirs as cladding to the corners 
of the foam on the steeple. And that was in prep work to do it. I'm going to do the same thing to the rest of the church. We're going to add some cladding here uh, at the edges of the roof going up. And we're also going to add some here covering up the pins and here covering up the edge of the foam. So that's going to be the next step is to add that cladding on all these edges. And that's just because since we got a plain white building, I want to add something that will add some depth to the building and so we can add some weathering to the building itself. So that's going to be the next step. Then after that, we're going to cut some foam steps. We're just going to cut a stack of blocks um, in increasingly smaller sizes. And then we're going to put a door. And we're going to build an external door. I'm uh, just going to build it out of, uh, again, these coffee stirs. Um, these are easy to get a hold of, so we're going to use these. Um, and then uh, we're going to come back. So I'm going to do the cladding. We're going to come back. I'm going to show you how I do my steps. And then we're going to assemble the door. So um, next step, cladding. All right, crafters, we're back. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick shot of what the hot glue and... Uh, coffee stirs look like just a quick shot of what that cladding is going to do and how that's going to look and it'll just it's mainly just to add a little depth to, to the piece and give you some piece edges to weather on so uh we're going to do the same thing to the front uh i just wanted to give you an example of what it's going to look like and uh, when we come back we're just going to cut some foam uh for the front and we're going to make those steps so we'll be back all right, grafters, we're back. Now you see I've grabbed a bunch of spare scrap foam that we've used, pieces we've cut. Um, the only thing we need to worry about is this front edge. The front edge needs to be kind of clean, and we want at least a quarter inch for each stair to be nice and clean. So what we've got, three inches wide. Uh, this top one, I mean the bottom one's going to be about two inches long. And then we're going to just stack the stairs up on them. Uh, going a quarter inch back each time. This will be a back wall and this will go right up under the building. We're going to also do some side railings. And these are going to be two inches long, obviously front to back, but an inch tall. And then just cut a little corner off to make it look like a railing. These will go on the sides. And then we're going to glue them all together. And we will have our staircase, which we will then glue on the front of the church. So... Um, like I said, we four steps with the thickness that we've got. Foam still uh, got the cardboard on it. Um, let's glue this up, and then we'll come back and have it on the front of our church. And then we're going to deal with the stone cladding that's the foundation that goes around on the building itself. So, we'll be right back. All right, crafters, we're back. We've got our... Front steps attached to our church, and now we're going to do that stone foundation cladding. We've gotten that wonderfully inexpensive uh, craft foam from the Dollar Tree, and we've cut it into some one-inch strips. We've got our good old-fashioned tin foil, and we're just going to give our stone a little bit of texture here. And then we're going to take this textured stone... And we're going to take the sides and the back of the church and using tacky glue, not using a hot glue, we are going to put a foundation piece around the bottom inch of the building. So it'll be here, it'll be next to the steps, and we're going to go all the way around. When two pieces meet, you're going to do a 45 degree bevel so they meet with each other and make a nice clean wrap all the way around. And this is going to represent the foundation that the building is sitting on. So 45 degree angles where they meet, one inch tall all the way around the building. Give it a nice texture with your tin foil ball. And we'll be back after we've got this put on with our tacky glue and the tacky glue is dried. When we come back, we'll be putting on the door. All right, crafters, we are back. And we are building our door facade. So we're going to cut some pieces of this coffee stir. One's going to be three inches long. We're going to cut two of them two inches long. And then we're going to cut three of them just under two inches long. About an inch and five eighths. So that when we put them together with the door, they get a nice two inch square for one in the middle on the two edges of the door there. 
this three inch is actually going to go on the ground in front of the door as a footer. So we're going to take these, cut them up, put them on the front of the building, and glue them all down with tacky glue. We want to use tacky glue, not hot glue. Uh, hot glue is going to create a gap that we don't want. And uh, once we've got them all glued up, uh, we're going to go to the building, and I'm going to show you the assembly. And then we're going to move on to our next step. So we'll be right back. All right, crafters, we are back, and here we have our church. We've got the door on. We've got the three-inch footer at the bottom. We've got the two-inch top and bottom with the uprights creating that facade of a double door. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to start the prep work for the priming because we're done with assembly. So at this point, we're going to take some black Mod Podge and cover all of our exposed foam. And I've even taken regular Mod Podge and coated the shingles for our roof a couple times just to give the roof a bit more support. But we can cover basically any we want with the black Mod Podge. Once we've got all the foam covered, we're going to let it all dry, and then we're going to take some light gray spray primer and give the building a light coat with the primer just to start our color base off. You can do black. I don't have a problem with doing black. I'm going to use gray because I want that white to really pop. And if I have a gray black underneath, it's going to take a couple of coats for the white to really show through. So light medium gray primer, black Mod Podge on all the exposed foam before we go there. We'll be back once we're primed and ready for paint. All right, crafters, we are back. <clears throat> I may have had to take a couple days off in the middle of the project. Uh, kind of a nasty cold. My voice is still feeling it, but we're back to work. So, um, we got the base church done, and we're just about to prime it when our executive producer, the missus, noticed it didn't have a base. I was like, you know what? You need to, you need to base that. So, who might argue with an excuse to do more terrain work? So, we did. Um... Cut a piece of foam board, mounted it on, beveled the edges, um, put down some uh, regular white glue, sprinkle around three sides, most of three sides as you can see, and just threw a mixture of our fine sand and cornmeal and let that dry. Then give it all a, whole, a nice coat of the uh, black paint mixed with Mod Podge. Uh, that coats it all, soaks it in, locks it all down. That's not going anywhere. And gave that same coat to the cladding at the bottom here. Uh, then once it all dried, we uh, took our uh, spray paint. We took uh, gray spray paint and uh, got the middle of the building. And then we took black spray paint and hit all the stone and hit the roof and the steeple. So, and the ground. So as you can see, this is where we're at. Uh, the next step is to just do some highlighting. I've already done the dark gray on the front steps and the base of the stone there and now we're gonna do our secondary our secondary coat there which is just a medium gray just to make it pop and come up some highlights so we take just some basic gray I use craft smart nothing fancy nothing special put a little bit on the brush wipe most of it off the brush we're not dry brushing but we're getting pretty close and we start at the edge and we're just trying to come up with the highlights here so we're going to just touch it a bit and get some of the highlights and the lights that shine through. So we're going to finish on that. We're going to do the same with these front steps. Kind of stip a little bit on this, on this stair area to kind of give it some depth, an illusion of depth. This is going to just look like regular stone when we're done. So we'll do that, and then we're going to come back. All right, crafters, so we've done our gray, and now we've taken, um, now we're taking our beige, um, our suede, and we're just using it to highlight. We're doing pretty close to a dry brush here, just to kind of go over the stone and give it a not using not using a gray or a white something with a little depth uh, the beige the suede has like it's a beige it's a slight grayish brown so we're going to use that to show off the highlights and we're going to stipple again on the rest of the concrete we've got up here and just to add some depth um, so we're going to go through that and then we're going to take like a dark chocolate brown and we're going to cover our ground and get the uh, illusion of dirt 
And I've been debating on the roof. I haven't decided on a color yet. I'm thinking either a like a dark slate red, or I mean a dark ochre red, or a, a dark slate gray, uh, like a bluish gray. So I'm still working on that. When we come back, the ground will be painted. The, the uh, gray will all be done here, as will the, uh, the suede. And the roof will have its base coat on. So uh, when we come back, um, we'll be mostly done with our paint job, other than doing the white and then the highlights. So uh, we'll see you soon. All right, crafters, we're back. And as you can see, we have our suede down, and all of our rock is nice and highlighted. We've also put down the dark brown around the uh, ground there to make it look like dirt. And we've taken uh, and given a slate gray color to the shingles on the roof. I did a 50% mix of a bright blue and a medium gray and just gave them a coat. And then after I gave it kind of a heavy coat to kind of make it look a little weathered, I took just a dry sponge brush and just kind of rubbed the whole thing down. And that took some of the paint off and let some of the black come through and uh, gave it a much more weathered effect. Now we're still going to end up giving it a wash later on in the, in the tutorial, but uh, we've already about 90% of the way there. So the last two things we're going to do for paint uh, after this all dries, um, we are just going to give the church itself, the body, a coat of white. And we want to probably give it like one or two coats of white because we want it to look fairly white. And this is where you're going to get to make a decision whether or not you're going to paint that front door. Uh, if you're going to paint it a different color, you're going to paint it white like the rest of the church. I'm just going to paint it white like the rest of the church, but I might paint the insight, uh, the inside, I should say, um, a slightly gray color. Um, and then when we do the weathering and the wash around, you're going to have that the darker color fill in the ridges there. So that'll give that again some more depth. In the meantime, while we are waiting for this to all dry you can begin the prep for the windows now you remember we printed out those sheets those cutout sheets uh, that we got from Hearst Arts with those window tracings well I printed out a second copy and then what we did we cut out eight windows but not among the windows themselves we actually took the basic window and we cut a quarter of an inch around the outside of them. So we've got this 110 cardstock, and we've got it cut a quarter of an inch around on the outside edge. So it's slightly bigger than the window. And then we cut the window out of the middle of it. And then with the transparency that we printed, these are going to be what we put the windows on. But we're going to do that at the end. So this is something to do while you're waiting. It's just to cut out the windows. You remember, we're going to need eight of the windows like this. You're going to need one for the round window, and then you're going to need one for the big window in the back. So you're going to need to cut that all out. And again, you just find the window that matches, about a quarter inch around, and add that lip. And then cut out the window itself. When we come back, the church will be whited out, and this will be all set for us to do um, some of our detailing as far as we do our weathering and make the roof tiles look a little more weathered and the body itself after it's whited out. So cut those out, paint your body white, paint your front door the way you're going to do it, and uh, then we're going to come back. All right, crafters, here we are. Here is our church. We've got our paint job done. Uh, we've started the weathering process on the roof. We took our slate gray that was painted on black, and then we took a slightly damp foam brush while the paint was still mostly fresh and just kind of ran down the paint and it uh, caused some of it to poke out. Uh, we're still a little damp here, but uh, what it does is it causes some of the black to poke out and it makes it look really nice. It really creates this tar shingle roof effect that I've really come to like. I've done in the past a few times. We've also done our layering and weathering on the stone to make it look, uh, give it some depth. And the concrete on the front steps and the front walk here, this has all been done here. We've painted the ground with the basic brown. Uh, we don't need to do much more than that. The flocking is going to cover everything else. So we didn't have to go solid. There was going to be some black sticks through here and there. Not going to be a big deal. When we put the flock down, it's going to cover that up. Um, that'll look good.
So here we are. We're still going to do a wash on this building. Uh, and we're going to do a wash before we do the final step. So we're actually going to do a wash. And then we're going to seal it. And we'll come back and I'll show you how we're going to do the wash. But it's our homemade wash, which is uh, just uh, warm water, um, a few drops of black paint, and then just a little bit of dish soap, which we're going to shake up and mix up and make it a nice, very flowy color. And we wanted to just highlight the cracks and the edges and the crevices. As you notice, I didn't paint the door. I decided I'm just going to let the, uh, the uh, wash do the work for me there. So until we do the wash, we are done with the building. So we can take this and set it aside. Okay, so we've set our building aside. And now we've got those windows that we cut out. And as you can see, I've got them cut out here and I've got them attached using uh, some painter's tape to their backside and putting them on a piece of plastic so they'll all come off pretty easily. Now all we're gonna do is just, the side that's gonna be sticking out, the side that we're not gonna be attaching to the building, and have that face out we're just going to take some white spray paint and we're just going to give them a nice even solid coat to protect the paper and they give it that exterior finish the other side's going to be glued so we don't need to paint that and because the way we're doing the windows we're going to do the weathering before we attach these so this is something we can do in preparation while it's drying we can go back and do the wash on the building so, I'm going to take this, I'm going to spray it, and we're going to come back, we're going to look at the building, and we're going to do our wash. Okay, so we've got our wash made, and I've tested it a little bit just to make sure it's working, and it's the right consistency I want. So what I do is, what I do when I've taken my wash, and I make mine, warm water, a few drops of black paint, depending on what I'm making it for, typically just black, sometimes I'll add a little brown in. In this case, we're just going with a little black uh, by itself and a little bit of uh, a surfacate. You can use Jet Dry. Um, I've got a couple drops of Dawn in there just to break up water surface tension. And then I'll just take it, especially when you're dealing with a white surface, I'm just taking a very wet heavy brush and I'm running it along the edges that I want there to be weathering at. And we'll let that run down. And then I'll take a dry foam brush and just kind of run it over the surface. I should say take a wet one and run it over the surface. And then take a dry one and kind of take it off the major surfaces. So that will get nice and grimy and we'll get that weathered effect, but we're not going to undo the fact that it's supposed to be a white chapel. So again, we're going to take a regular brush, heavy good mount, go along the surface. We want it to just go down and weather it. And then we come to like a major surface, we'll wet it. And then Take a large amount off. Now for our roof here, when we're weathering this, you're going to want to go up with your strokes and then let it run down um, to let the roof weathering do what a roof does. There should be run marks. There should be rivulet marks. It should look like water's run down the roof and weathered over the years. Because that's what this is. It's a roof. That's what shingles do. And you'll find when this dries, it gets a really nice effect. Because we work in foam, we don't need to worry about how wet it gets, but don't want to go completely crazy. Um, just, you know, work at it. Every once in a while, dab some off. Get a little extra. Take your piece, turn a little bit, let some of it run off. Don't want to completely soak into the glue you've got underneath already. But what this will do is it'll just form a nice, a nice grimy cover to what we're trying to do here. And you can already see how this weathering is coming along. This is going to look really great when we're done. So do this to the whole, the whole model, and then set it aside and let it dry. When that's dry, 
and you got the effect you want, take your clear sealant, matte sealant, and kind of seal your whole building and the ground around it. We'll come back and do flocking after it's sealed, and we're going to put on the windows after it's sealed, and you'll see why when we get to the window stage. So the next time you come back, you're going to have a dry building, already weathered, sealed, and you're going to want to bring in those window pieces, which should be dry from the spray painting, and then that sheet of, of uh, transparency that we color printed with the stained glass windows on. Again, if you need to get those sheets, they're in HurstArts.com, and just look for their window traceries and stained glass windows. We'll be back. All right, crafters, we are back, and look at this beauty. She's weathered. It's a nice white chapel, weathered roof, weathered rock. We've got our outside prepped and ready for the flock. This thing is like 99% go. This thing is beautiful. I've been following along. You two have a beautiful piece of terrain you're going to stick on your table and make your players go, whoa. So this thing is ready. It's ready for windows. So we're going to take our chapel and we're going to set it aside. And we're going to do our windows. So what we need is we need those pieces we cut out of the cardstock. We need that sheet. And we're going to need a really super sharp pair of scissors. And we're going to need some super glue. And this is how we're going to do this. When you've printed these transparencies, one side's going to be super shiny, one side's going to be slightly dull. The slightly dull side is actually the side that was printed on. So we're going to turn them over because we want the super shiny side to be out. So we're going to take our cardstock. I'm going to make sure we have the bottom. This is the bottom of it. So we're going to take it and we're going to take our super glue. And we're just using a tiny amount of super glue and just kind of lining the edge of the window. And then we're going to take the shiny side down. I'm going to glue the window to it. So then when we're done, we got this wonderful window glued into place on a window frame. And let that dry. And then once it's completely dried, we're going to glue it onto the chapel using the paper to glue it in place. It's going to keep this stuff easily on, but it's going to give us a lip so we're not going to have the plastic edge showing. So yeah, you're going to trim these out with just a little bit of space around the outside of them so that the window shows up just around the outside. This frame just goes right around the window. So you leave a little bit of the clear plastic around and that's what you glue to the cardboard. And then we're going to glue the cardboard windows like that right to your chapel. Also use just a little bit of super glue to do that. That way there's no gap, no lip, no nothing. Then we're done. We are done at that point. So let's do those windows and then we'll come back. We'll do some flock and we're going to see what we got. So cut your windows out, glue them on, glue them on to your church. We'll be back. All right, crafters, here we go. Our final and finished chapel. Really looking good here. We've got a nice weathering effect covering the whole thing. A little grimy, a little dirty. We've got our wonderful looking shingled roof, and we flocked it up. Combination of fine ground flock with a little bit of coarse ground flock. And then a little bit of struce material on top just to add some color to weeds and or flowers. And we added some moss in the front for some shrubbery, some static grass, and in a couple of places just to make it look like weeds growing on the concrete. And we've even added 
a few pieces of a large clump just for some bushes and shrubberies growing around this chapel we've built. Now the campaign I built this for is sort of like a zombie apocalypse or you could use this in a just a regular average normal town or supernatural type campaign. So here you've got your intrepid adventurers who've been hearing strange lights and sounds being reported from the chapel at night when there should be nobody there. You'll notice I cut a bottom out the, the uh, base material that I put the model on. I cut a hole out so that we get a couple LED lights in there and you can see how they flicker and they light up those windows. It's just a beautiful effect. This is a really great piece, going to make your players just ooh and ah over it. A great central piece for a campaign encounter, um, a great part of our main street. So as we go on with these projects, we're going to build a couple more buildings. We're going to build a shop, an apartment building, um, a warehouse, a garage. So as we go down, um, we're just going to build up our street so that you can walk down in your small town street where weird things may be going when the lights aren't on. And uh, make them cheap, make them easy, and make them wow. That's what we do. We're here to up your game. Epic your board. Glad you could be here for this with me. And uh, we'll see you next time. Game on. Mm -hmm.